What is up, guys? Bedoubles back again with a brand new video. Today, we're going to be doing another continuation of my main character that we started at the beginning of League 3. I'm going to be checking out an awesome new build called Windrager, a brand new dual-wielding-centered build, and you can already see the double sick axes I've got on. It's a lot of fun. It's massive AoE DPS, and we're going to keep progressing on my main. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's jump right in. <laughs> So guys, the enchant I'm using for this video is Wind Rager. This transforms Storm Strike into Wind Strike, so it's a wind-themed build. Wind Strike is 40 energy, does physical damage based on AP, just like Bloodthirst, for example. But if I crit with it, it resets the cooldown of Whirlwind. Whirlwind also gives me a new buff. The buff is going to increase attack speed and damage, and it stacks up to 10 times. If I reach the maximum amount of stacks, I'm actually going to summon a crazy wind tornado, and it does nature damage and also increases my attack speed and my wind strike damage by a bigger amount for four seconds. And so that's really, really strong. It's a two button build. You can see the wind strike right here, 817 damage with the way I have it played out right now. To contrast that, it's actually weaker than what Bloodthirst would be for me right now. And it's really weird because, you know, this is what you expect from a TG build, right? If you replace wind strike with Bloodthirst, it's literally Titanic Mutilate. It's the same build, except better, actually. I think theoretically it's just better. It actually might be the case that Titanic Mutilate is way better single target. That might actually be the kicker, right? And that this one's just better in general for AoE, but I have a feeling Wind Rager is just really, really good. I mean, I think most people agree that it's a really high tier new legendary enchant, so I'm really excited to give it a try. I'm testing a bunch of different random enchants to go with it. Pack Alpha, which is going to be Feral Spirit Synergy, which gives me more haste and will also extend the duration of haste every time I Wind Strike and reduce the cooldown by three seconds as well. Titanic Finale, which says every time I use my Slice and Dice right here, I'm actually going to have a chance to proc Blood Rage, and what Blood Rage does for me is it procs the Fury Warrior talent in Rage for 10% more physical damage and 10% more melee haste. By the way, this spec will be in my Discord or the iteration that we have at least by the end of the video, so the better iteration, and uh, you guys can check all the talents out in depth, but we'll be going over things as they come up throughout the video. I'm just going to go over the main points right now. So 10% more physical damage, 10% more melee haste every time I slice and dice, but this is only a 12 second duration, and uh, the Blood Rage is 22, so we got to get that up again. So we have the Blood Rage itself to use, but I'm also going to be trying a different kind of enchant, something that helps me ramp up a little bit faster, and that's going to be Death Mark, which transforms premeditation into a new ability called Death Mark, and I can show it to you guys right here. It instantly adds five combo points when used to your targets, and that is sick. I don't have to be in stealth for this, but it's on a one minute cooldown. This is what we're going to try. Anyway, let's get into Dire Mall West, and I'll show you how the build plays so far. So this is, uh, we'll talk about the gear and everything in a moment. We hopefully end up getting some big, big big rewards some big big upgrades i'm at 63 item level guys and i've just started trying to convert from an agi intellect set similar to this uh, court of the elements mythic right here uh, and go to a strength crit based set similar to these leg plates a valor mythic that i got now like i said the build is pretty simple to play it's basically just two abilities and when we do big aoe pulls we can blade flurry so i'm gonna pop it i want to show you guys the damage okay look at this i'm just gonna go in before it all stacks look at that and we're in first place with 5k DPS and I clicked two buttons. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Now, the way this is supposed to work is that you whirlwind and then you wind strike. Wind strike is hopefully going to crit. And one of the reasons I like being axe spec is because I kind of want to just, you know, abuse that. I want to go too hard into it perhaps and just try to make it crit every single time. And then when you crit with wind strike, whirlwind comes off cooldown essentially. By then, typically wind strike is off cooldown as well because it's very short. And you can see it basically worked right there. It's about one second off in that regard so i'm thinking about getting some kind of random enchant that you know reduces the cooldown of either whirlwind or wind strike something there has to be something that's smoothing out the build so one thing i'm definitely trying to do is upkeep the slice and dice as much as i can get that attack speed but also never ever lose the enrage buff now i've got two weak auras uh, and i want to show you both of them real quick they're very pivotal for how i play the build because they're going to help me you know divert my gaze so to speak away from the top right the natural place that your buffs are and onto the top of my character so that, you know, it's just a lot easier to just only look in this area rather than, you know, in this whole area, right? Blood Rage puts something on the left side and you can see it's actually, you know, losing color as it ticks away. So I can see exactly where the Enrage is. This is not for the Blood Rage. This is for the Enrage effect that comes off the Blood Rage. Now I can show you the uh, Slice and Dice real quick by using the Death Mark. So that's a pretty nice one. You can see it did instantly put five combo points on this Mana Remnant. I can use the Slice and Dice, which also gives me blood 
Blood Rage, and you can see both. And I have one on the right for the Slice and Dice, and one on the left for the Enrage. Now, I wouldn't say I've perfectly figured this out yet. In fact, I just got to the point where I've decided that I'm Axe Spec, I've started to get more gear rolling in, and then as a result, I've decided to start actually trying to get my random enchants in order. This is where I've started to be, to where I felt like, okay, I'm getting strong right i'm starting to feel like the build is coming together and we might actually have it perfect the first try or it might be the case once again that we end up changing it dramatically throughout the video we'll have to figure that out but you can see this is a very basic aoe pull where i actually admittedly forgot to keep the enrage up for the first maybe like 10 seconds exactly and i still came in first place dps with 7.5k uh, aoe with my first place damage being rampant tornado which is the dot that comes from spamming everything and i also took the cleave by the way so that's one thing to keep in mind the cleave is macro to everything so that's why i forgot to tell you guys about it originally i guess you could go heroic strike but i'm just trying to keep with the massive aoe theme now i do want to be honest with you guys and just straight up start with the death mark and go for that uh slice and dice you can see both of my weak ours i want to be honest with you guys and show you the single target this is what i've got and i might not be playing it right so we have to figure it out together so essentially i'm spamming my stuff as it comes right again you can see the cooldown resetting on the whirlwind we just use the blood rage to refresh the enrage itself okay whirlwind again we're going to be able to go for another slice and dice and you look we got lucky 60% chance on the enrage. My DPS is going up. You know, I started kind of slow on this one, but you can see it's it's not respectable. And this is what I actually said in my tier list. This is what I had heard from people before I even played the build was that they said you could do crazy AOE, but you had about 2K single target. And then another guy told me, no, he saw somebody do crazy single target in some kind of raid. And then there's a flame tongue, you know, one H build running around. And I think that might be good for single target. Maybe that's what people are seeing. I guess we'll figure it out. But 2K, you know, it's I didn't even quite get there for that boss when things go perfectly though that's basically where i'm at the aoe is pretty amazing though but again the single target definitely lacks so this was super scuffed they didn't all come from the same side and i'm over here popping every cooldown just like so ready still came in first place dps but it was only like 4k 3.9 at the moment we get it over 4k no we didn't crit it even went down but then the little dudes spawn and now uh, you could see the tornado as well it's pretty good damage in fact it's incredibly good damage but we're at least way ahead of the pack so i think the real goal with this dungeon first of all i queued for it because it's the daily and the daily is going to give me a mythic cache the mythic cache could give me a variety of things we're hunting for a trinket for sure we're also hunting to replace our uh cord of the elements for sure so a belt uh those are two things i could possibly get so it's not only for completing the dungeon that we'll have a chance to get something good but also for turning in the daily so that's going to be a very very big point okay i I like capacitor totem that's another thing i took can we uh, get him before he arcane bolts we can okay luckily we didn't pull the other residual monstrosity we can kill these mana bursts off we're good to go i want to see how we do with single target with this boss i'm very very curious when you time the slice and dices properly and you can get the blood rage going it feels really good but it is one of those things where if you make one mistake the timing is just all way off and i really don't know how to make it better we're gonna figure something out because i literally can't continue like this i literally can't man i feel like i'm missing something i think it could be the scaling like we talked about before the gear basically we should be right here so we don't get knocked in a random direction hey i actually have over 2k dps absolutely massive actually and i literally ended basically exactly where i was 1700 i'll take it it's just a little bit better it's not like the elemental devastation build like that one i was already doing over 3k with the same item level that i have now so that's a great point of comparison but elemental devastation literally gave me a headache to play so i mean it's a give and take this one doesn't give me a headache at all this one i can spam mythics all day and uh, no matter how boring it is you can get through it because the build's fun all right so first of all mythic dungeon cash strength based of course Ooh, death knight oh that's intellect okay next one let's see demon shear i don't think i well i'm gonna keep it because it's a sword you never know uh and light forge darn it man i don't want the intellect strength gear okay let's go turn the daily in adventurers needed dire mall west heroic but it's gonna give me mythic gear there we go and what do we get necromantic band i already have the literal same thing another strength intellect god okay now i have eleven thousand marks some of you guys might be wondering what the point of marks are other than you know doing your dailies getting your scrolls of unlearning right here so you can try new stuff as far as i can see 
maybe leave a comment if you figured out something that I haven't. The literal only thing that's really worth doing is getting Mystic Scrolls, either the Legendary or the Epic, but I've been focusing on Legendaries, and just seeing if you get something usable. Now, the problem with this, and you guys are gonna think like this is the dumbest thing I've ever said, but I swear this is true. For some reason, you can get duplicates as if it's a freaking card game. So I can buy this, and this has happened six or seven times, sadly. Uh, if I click this, it could actually be one of the Legendary enchants I already own. What the f and I did bring it up as a bug and I got a message that basically said it is what it is. So let's see, do we get something usable? Frost Lich, I did. I actually did. I actually want to do it again. I'm going to say I'm uh, I'm pretty lucky. Oh, I already have that one. <laughs> see, well, you know what? I actually probably should have called that. You know, if you win once when you're betting, you never go again, guys. If you can learn anything from me is if you're going to bet, if you're going to gamble, let's say, uh, just stop when you win. That's all. Just stop when you win. All right, I do kind of want to mix it up. I want to go ahead and try this tier hands daily. Uh, I'm pretty excited to just farm some stuff out and do some chill grinding. I uh, 25 Scarlet Emblems, and we got to go to tier's hand, which is kind of a ways away. But I can take this teleporter right here and just simply go to Western Plague Land, and we'll just run from there. I've got really good mount training and everything on this guy. He's a pretty full character. Uh, so yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. And we're definitely doing this one in no risk. All right, guys, I'm questing in tier's hand right now, and I do want to quickly go over just some ideas for high risk I, this is my you know weekly monthly psa whatever it is to fix high risk so while we do this quest i only need four more emblems anyway i'm just going to go ahead and talk about this first and foremost i want you to imagine that i'm in tears hand right now but it's not in pve mode i'm in high risk now i'm a firm believer that uh, pvp can be fun uh, and that the reason it's not fun in mmos is because game designers are, they don't even try they're PvEers at heart they're not thinking outside of the box they're not analyzing the things that make pvp bad and they're not attempting to fix them. In fact, in most games, I've actually noticed they reinforce the toxic parts of PvP, and then they wonder why it doesn't succeed. So for me, I think that uh, over all my years of playing WoW, the thing that I've heard the most is that there's really two main things people hate about PvP. Number one, they absolutely detest being ganked by somebody who then eliminates skill from the equation. You know, the people who say, I don't like being ganked when I'm low, to me, that's Darwinism. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, that's natural selection. You know, if you go into high risk and you'd like to play around at one HP, that's your fault, dude. You know, that's not PvP's fault. That's not the dude that ganked you's fault. That's opportunity. You know, like, you take that. No, I think the real things is when you're ganked or you're fighting somebody in high risk or PvP in general, and you realize very, very early on in the fight, that skill is absolutely not part of the equation. Uh, it's absolutely not at all part of the equation and that you are losing for something that um, you could not have done anything different to prevent the outcome of. That is bad PVP. And that's, you know, for any game, not just an MMO, not just WoW, not just Ascension. I think that's something anybody, PVP, PVE, doesn't matter what you play, we can admit that if skill is not a part of the equation, it's not fun, it's not good. Gear is the biggest culprit of that. It's the reason in most cases in this game where people think to themselves, well, I I guess I just don't get to play. So I want you to imagine a world where I'm in high risk. There's an item level bracket. And I don't know exactly the perfect way to do the brackets, but I could very much think about it real quick and probably come up with a good way to do it. I think the devs could as well, though. It's why I'm leaving it open. But let's just say um, I could not attack somebody lower than item level 60, but I could not be attacked by somebody higher than item level 66. I mean, right off the bat, gear is nearly not an equation. And maybe, maybe it should be two item levels and not three. But I, in some ways, I'm mimicking the way it works when you level. Now, everybody from what I've seen, whether you're a PvE or a casual, a hardcore PvPer, most of us tend to enjoy high risk leveling, um, and that's because typically your fights are more even. You know, you fight somebody while leveling, their gear is not perfect, they don't have perfect REs, uh, so that if you don't either, you actually have a chance, and it's a lot easier to make a comeback because the scaling is just different. And also, we can't leave out the very simple fact the whole point of what I'm saying is that people who out level you by crazy amounts, like let's say you're level 32, you can't be attacked by a level 39 and that's not even something actual wow lets you do if i'm level 30 33 is the highest in most versions of high risk that i've seen in the recent times in uh in ascension and then 27 is the lowest so you can't grief people either i say replicate it for max level and the fact that they haven't done it yet is only meaning that they don't high risk you know it's one of those things where they're like when they came for the bread maker i said nothing when they went for the guy that made meat i said nothing i'm really trying not to make this political so sorry for the food analogies but then when they came for the high risk 
you know? I also said nothing, and then they came for the raids, and I had nothing left. I know I just kind of mixed food and gaming analogies in there, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. Nobody cares about PvP because they don't PvP, um, but PvP could be fun. I think that's the first step is item level brackets in high risk at max. If you want gear to be a thing, that's what you have to do. Now, if there were item level brackets, the only other thing I would also add is honorable combat to every single zone that you're sending somebody into for a PvP quest. I don't think a single PvP quest should send send you into a multi-zone. There are other places where people go right now in this game to have team fights and they're called cash fights and they go for these caches of loot. And so that's what I think. I think single PVP is really the way to go. So honorable combat zones and not just that, but if you've played Fellforge mode, you would know that after you kill somebody in honorable combat, you can't attack them again for a short period of time. But I think they should buff it because I don't think it's as high as what I'm going to recommend, which is anywhere between five to 10 minutes. I think that you should have a five to 10 minute window where you can't be attacked, not by a different person, Person, but by the same person who just killed you so a, another rando could come and fight you and that's fair game but the same guy who let's say you lost to can't attack you again so what does that mean well it would mean people can actually do their damn daily imagine that you want to do a pvp daily but there are so many people around that you literally can't because everybody's going to kill you and they farm you and camp you like you can't play so then obviously there's no point there either this can be a hundred percent eliminated because five to ten minutes is the perfect amount of time for me to complete this daily and uh, not be camped by the same dude if there was a dude right so that's just my recommendation and i hope that they actually do something about it all right guys let's turn it in keeping evil at bay tears hand scarlet emblems and okay this is new they just added this the loaded call board cache this is apparently you know making non-dungeon dailies worth your time uh the loot is supposed to be good remember when i got that horrible green item and it was such a disappointment in a previous video yeah this is supposed to be a fix for that so to speak let's see what we get Ooh. Oh, it's a Zen Rock! Oh! <laughs> yes! What? It's a PvE Zen Rock. I also got Gordok Nose Ring, which, uh, I knew it! It's one of the more expensive things. Somebody's, you know, a lot of undercutters, right? You know, they saw this first price point and they've really gone down. But that is nutty! That is nutty, guys. Actually, with this other sword I got, the Demon Shear, I can go sword spec. And guys, I never have the opportunity really to do it. The swords I've just noticed have been more difficult to acquire. Plus, I just want to use the 66 item level 295 sword. I have to change my build up a lot. I did not expect this. And that's because if you go sword spec, it actually gives up to 5% hit. As well as a 10% chance to get an extra attack for 120% damage. And uh, it's increased by 40% with a two-handed weapon, which we have two of those. So we can get rid of this Polaxe spec right off the bat for that 5% crit. We're gonna change a lot as a result of this. So I'm actually in a weird place. I've got basically 2% hit. I'm gonna go ahead and take one point out of this precision. So that's interesting. I lost a lot of crit so far. Not like a crazy amount. I'm still critting more than a normal build, I think. But I did lose a lot of crit going with this version. However, I did open up three Talon Essence, which I certainly obviously didn't have before. I'm thinking of maybe shredding blows because I still think I'm going to crit a decent amount and this is going to give me 15% armor pen. But I wonder if there might be just something better out there that I just need to look for. One thing I like to do is look up the other builds and uh, just reverse engineer. I like to do it after I've had my own ideas, but this is a really good way to just expedite the process. The fact of the matter is we're all human if we're all thinking of the same thing we're probably all going to come to very similar conclusions it's just some people will stop sooner than others some will deep think right and really go hard into it so what you can do to expedite the uh, thought process i actually think it's 100 superior to making your own build because it's just smarter sadly to say the people that made their builds first now get their builds iterated on and then they get left in the dust hypothetically speaking if there's room for the dust to be uh well to leave them in I, I think you know what i'm trying to say so the first thing i'm seeing is actually deep wounds and this makes a lot of sense because i was highly highly pondering it the day before deep wounds would be weird because i could actually go for some interesting storm strike synergy which is going to be the same thing as wind strike for my build and i could go for things like blood rain storm strike increases my bleed damage by 15 percent if I did go for something like that and maybe have uh, like rupture somehow fit into this rotation, but probably not, probably just rend and deep wounds. So if I did go with this, I could maybe consider utilizing a really good epic spell called Hunger for Blood. This is especially good for me if you think about it because I have nature damage just naturally in my build, and this increases not just physical damage, which is the thing that most builds use it for anyway, but also nature damage by 10%. But uh, I do think I'm just going to try the deep wounds for now. It can't possibly be 
be bad. It might be like 4% of my total DPS at the end of the day if I had to take a random guess. I'm still hit Captain Expertise capped, and now we're going to be using dual swords. Zinrock, yes, in one. And if you could actually believe it, I'm, I'm putting on a demon shear. And the weird thing about this demon shear, by the way, is that it actually has 10 expertise on it. You could take a look at that. It sends a shadowy bolt for 150 shadow damage, plus some over time. 48 AP is what I care about. It's not the best stats in the world, right? But it does have that weird 10 expertise. That's actually more important than it needs to be because I lost my axe expertise for being orc, so I'm not capped with that. That literally means I'm gonna have to find one talent point, and we're just gonna dip into this. That way we can pull the talent point out, and we can go back into the rogue tree and grab one more point in weapon expertise, which will give me plus five, which if you can believe it, things just work sometimes, boys. Uh, we can get up to 26, and that is where we need to be. That's the hit cap. So let me just show you guys how this works. I have the berserker stance, and I'm at 30% crit right there, and then I can do rock biter on both weapons. I'm at 1440 AP. I can do uh, this little blessing of kings, 5% more stats, Gift of the Wild. We're almost 1,500 AP, 63 item level, and we're dual wielding some swords. Zinrock should be in the main hand, though. Oh, it looks so good. Imagine if we get another one, man. Uh, I'm always, like, that's my first big weapon, by the way. That's my first massive pull, so I'm really happy with that. But okay, 31% crit now. Everything seems to be where it needs to be. We're doing pretty good. Okay, so I think the idea is that all of these other dailies that typically I skip, because I just do the dungeon, the BG, and the arena skirmish and normal rated dailies, I think I think I'm supposed to be doing these now to see if I can get some good gear from those new caches. We're going to give it a chance. I'm going to go to Fellwood and uh, see if we can kill 30 denizens of Jade Fire Run. So that's just a quick fly north. And then maybe if that ends up being a good bit of gear and giving us the loot we think it's going to give us, we can also do Stop the Hate, kill some Hate Shriekers in, I think, Winter Spring. Uh, no, it's Corrin's Crossing. So east more Eastern Plague Lands. Gotcha. Wish I had that the first time when I went to farm in the beginning. And yeah, we'll see if it's actually worth it. Okay, to Fellwood I go. I think my favorite thing about the daily quests actually being worth doing, assuming these caches actually end up being legit, is that look at all the loot I got just from farming random crap. And I had an actual aim, I had an actual purpose, but now I get a bunch of passive income as well, because when I end up vendoring this, it's probably 20g you know, but it adds up because I still have multiple dailies to do. Not to mention when you actually get something good, right? We're going to go all the way north. We're already in Fellwood now, and we're just going to kill all of the satyrs up here. I could go south, but I like going north. All right, here we are, Jade Fire Run. So we just farm all the demons, I think. All right, look at this. This is sword spec. Yeah, I'll definitely take it. We already got a Scorpashi skull cap too, so we're already starting to get some drops. That's 1G, basically. Now, one of the things that's really good about playing sword spec is some of the better players I've seen who had more gear and experience playing this build were using sword spec, and that was actually a big part of why their DPS was so high. I remember looking through Skata or Recount specifically and thinking, wow, sword spec is giving a lot more than the other ones would. It's way more than I thought, at least based on what, you know, the actual recount is showing us. It's hard to quantify sometimes like the attack speed from May spec or even just the 5% crit from Axe spec. Look at that one shot with the Whirlwind. We're going to start getting Demonic Runes. I'm going to save these two. These give you mana at the cost of life, and these can be really good. And the best part about this build is that it's a melee farmer's dream. Like, every caster has a build they can go to that's good for farming. It's really good when melees get one. All right, we have uh, 17 more to go. One shot, basically, right there. I guess the awkward part about this build is when you don't hit the crit on Wind Strike. It really feels like there's, like, room for something else, you know? But when it goes perfectly, there's not room for anything. So it's just kind of wonky, I think. I also just want to see more variety, too. I'm not complaining because I think this spec is better than the other TG specs that have come out. And this spec also has more variety in terms of the fact that it can be played with 1H weapons and it's not forced into TG. But, you know, it's important to keep in mind that when you just look at the rotation of this build, it's the literal same, except reskinned, as basically any TG build that's ever been out there. The real thing is summoning the tornado and i really wish they had just you know integrated wind fury into it throw wind fury in the tooltip make it to where the best way to use this build or one of the ways is to put wind fury on one of your weapons at least maybe even two and i think that would have been logical and made sense for a wind build but you know what i'm not the devs i just have some ideas i'm just a player okay i'm only thinking about fun 
Look at that. Okay, we only need seven more to go. I love the music here. It's so ominous. I've also been getting some interesting stuff. You know, we get a lot of travelers backpacks, it seems, from farming stuff. I've gotten two already. These can both go to my alt. So this is a really good thing to do on your main. If you don't want to waste money on the auction house or DP shop, just farm travelers backpacks by doing your dailies. Like this guy is basically perfect, but my other guy could definitely use these nice bags. So that's exactly where those are going to go. And we also get some other things like major healing pots. Like the 13 I have on the bottom right, those are basically all from just farming stuff. All right, one shot. We have one more to go. Traveler's boots on that. Definitely take it. There's the death mark into the slice and dice. Uh, you know, I don't really have to keep the buffs up for farming things, but there you go. 30 out of 30. Let's go turn it in. See if we get good loot, get a cash from it, and see if it's worth our time. All righty, lesser known issue. Playtime is over. Don't, what? No, Dungeoneer spoils of war. Okay, so which dailies specifically give me the good stuff? You know, like, I doubt this is going to have anything good. Let's see. A phase blade. Well, it's interesting because I already have a phase blade, a better one. Uh, but if I ever want to go the 1H uh, flame tongue spec, I could go sword spec, I think, hack and slash at least as well. And then we can go double phase blade. How cool is that? Kind of like a pirate, you know, with a double scimitar look. I'll take that. I'm just farming different pieces right now and keeping certain things that I might use in the future. I think for a lot of you guys, you would just vendor all of this. So you can always think about it like that as well. It's like extra money. So maybe it's like the elite ones. I want more of those then. I'd like like two more of those. Like get people out in the world so it's not just dungeon and BG spamming and arena spamming. Let people go in the world. What's the harm in that? Have you guys ever thought about it? Like what if when you clicked on this and went to PvE quests, there were like two of each of the different quests that there are currently only one of now so one thing i definitely need to do is probably get the sword spec random enchant i still have the poleaxe spec one on and uh, that's certainly not the best thing i could have when i'm dual wielding swords it probably isn't going to cost that much let's see is it just called sword spec yes 17g is that the Ooh, i think i think that is 17 gold is exactly the cheapest one that's not bad i'll definitely take that i'm gonna go ahead and build up the runes and get the extract take it off and uh start putting that one on my gear i love doing the oh i sold some stuff yes 33 30 23 21 nice okay things are starting to sell it's looking up but i was gonna say i love being horrid because uh they, they have this new meta on ascension where people only place their altars on top of like some kind of raised object so in orgrimmar it's the pillar but in Stormwind it's the call board and it wasn't always the case by the way this is so cool i don't know why i love it but i like when the culture changes i guess i think it's really really neat uh but i'm just gonna keep oh i have an extract already it's just so lucky everything's working out so we have there we go sword spec and we could put this on our weapon, I guess, first of all. And then just replace the other Polak spec ones with this one. I'm starting to get my orbs and stuff again. I noticed I didn't get too many from those dailies either. I wonder what they're scared of by not giving us, like, way more orbs to play with. I really do feel like it must be that people's play styles are just... I don't know. Maybe you guys aren't making as many builds and they're watching that and they think that it's all perfectly fine. But if you're going from build to build to build to build and you're constantly changing things and getting new random chance, you want more, <laughs> you know, more. These quests are pretty easy though. And they're pretty fun. I just want more, man. Like seriously. Also, do we still have PVP gear on? I think we do. That is a really big deal. I have to get rid of my final PVP trinket. And I think that in order to do that, I need to get the regular version of it. I wonder if there's a daily actually for Blackrock Depths. No, there's no daily, but I think I'm just going to queue Mythic Blackrock Depths. Hope I get lucky. Maybe that's the plan. The thing is, I'm looking in world chat and I so badly want to join so many of these raids. But number one, I need to fix my single target DPS. Number two, I need to get rid of the PvP gear. Okay, I say we take a risk. I'm going to actually do it, even though it's such a crapshoot, man. Uh, but we're going to go to uh, Blackrock Depths, the upper city, get to the last boss, the last boss has a chance to drop the mythic epic version of Hand of Justice. Let's just take the risk and we'll be able to check out the DPS with the sword spec along the way and see if it improved. This might actually also heavily improve the single target DPS and it might be good enough. We'll have to figure it out. Okay, that's ridiculous. Sword spec alone just brought me all the way up to what is that, 2600? That's a lot of DPS for like one little baby change. Okay, Zinrock as well. Zinrock is probably a big deal as well, right? But, uh, wow, I did not expect that. I'm really happy with that. I think we're on the right track then. I really do think it must have just been a gear thing. We're still critting a lot. It's at what right now? 31%, like I said. I'll definitely take that. And on just an average pull, we're over 5k DPS. It's so simple. That's like the thing that you really have to keep in mind. Okay, can we bring our DPS up? We started kind of scuffed on this one when it comes to the Blood Rage. All right, we can uh, go ahead and refresh it there. I love that the slice and dice just 
works so well. I think that this is the first time I've actually had some weak RS that like look right. Sometimes they just look out of place. We can blood rage right there. Okay, we're approaching the end game. We're at 2200 right now. I could take that and be okay with it. It definitely still went up a lot. Okay, 2338 that time. So a little bit of progress. Yeah, don't mind me. Just an easy, cool 20k DPS. All right, we made it to Magmus. Okay, so we ended that one first place DPS. But still, sometimes it's so hard to quantify where I'm supposed to be right now. Like, uh, wh what am I supposed to have at 63 item level? But uh, I guess 2k is where I am right now, roughly, for single target. And then we can do, you know, basically the sky's the limit for AoE. That's probably the best part. Like, this build is going to shine and probably is way already shining in Mythic Plus. It's not even funny. Like, this is so simple and easy and strong in AoE pulls. So I, I got 4.7k and I scuffed it all over the place. And that's still fine. Now, to contrast that once again, like we did earlier in the video with single target, my Elemental Devastation build, he actually could at best, with better gear, only get to about this guy's casual AoE DPS. Look at that. You just go in and do 5k DPS insta on one whirlwind. It's like no biggie. No biggie at all. Where are we? 7k, 8k, 6k? I'll take it. Just imagine if Wind Fury was genuinely a part of this build in the tooltip so that there was a real reason to use it over Rockbiter or Flame Tongue. And then imagine you use Zephyr with this build. And so you are literally Wind Strike Zephyr with Wind Fury. It's just, come on, it's so perfect. It's like a missed opportunity in my opinion. All right, popping every cooldown. Uh, not on you though, on you. This is exactly why we're here. This is the boss that has the potential to drop exactly what we need, which is a trinket. A trinket that will allow me to do perhaps some Mythic Plus, and uh, that's what I want to do on this melee build. I have not done any Mythic Plus on a melee build yet. Okay, this is a scuffed pull, so that's not good. I'm stunned. We refreshed the Enrage. Everything's up. We're getting to that awkward point though. All right, there we go. Refreshed it with the Blood Rage, but it was definitely a good six or seven seconds without it. We're at 4.4K DPS, but there was a lot of cleave with this fight. All right, we're on Dagran now. All right, still first place, but you can see when it lowered down the single target, we dropped like majorly. We're at 3.5K right now. I'm hoping we can maintain that till the very end. He's almost dead. This will be it. I hope we get the trinket, man. I really hope we get the trinket. Okay, 3.5k basically. Oh my god. Well, that's 30 minutes down the drain. Okay, two spell power pieces of gear, but we could still potentially get it from the cache or any kind of trinket from the caches that we do. So we could see... Should I do miscellaneous? I think some of you guys said trinkets were under miscellaneous too, but what does that mean? You know what I mean? Oh, that's not a good first sign. Okay, let's try it again. That's a horrible sign. Okay, one more time. Oh my god, it was the wrong decision. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good, guys. Okay, so I was thinking back to my old TG mutilate videos and the stuff we learned along the way there. One of the things I remember prioritizing was just whirlwind random enchants that uh, reduce the cooldown of whirlwind so we can spam it as quick as humanly possible. As a result, I picked Picked up improved whirlwind and hasty whirlwind this is 1.5 seconds on the hasty whirlwind total and this is just one second so 2.5 seconds off bringing it down to a lovely 5.5 at least for now i want to try it why not okay there we go i'm level 124 with this right now it takes forever at this point but we can go ahead and extract the very last one and uh the old way that we did it was two for the hasty and uh three for the other so i can get rid of precision because i'm already hit capped i actually don't need that so that works out pretty well and now we're at a six second whirlwind and then if we use whirlwind while blood rage is up which we've had it set up now where uh it lasts exactly as long as the cooldown plus the slice and dice plus the death mark to make it more consistent um it looks like as long as blood rage is up we'll be able to lower the cooldown every time we use whirlwind by three seconds so that it's going to be up basically way more than it was before that's the basic gist right but i'm just curious what the aoe looks like pop the blood rage go in just keep doing our rotation like normal. I should have actually gone for the blade flurry, but we can do it now. I actually heard from a guy that he's able to pull like 14,000 DPS consistent. He showed me his weapons and he was mythic 10 on stuff. So he's way above our gear level and that's literally why. But uh, I'm not too unhappy with this. Our DPS is going up. You know, we're building it up. I didn't even have to death wish. But you can see like right now, I cannot possibly get the enrage effect up. Is that just supposed to be okay? I do have Blood Rage up all the time, which is fine, but the Enrage effect doesn't last as long as the Blood Rage. It's almost like half the length of it. I'm also having way more Rage issues now that I've done this with the uh, Whirlwind. 
but uh, it is really ridiculous. Like, this is much more damage. It looks like I'm at about 7k consistent AoE, uh, which is way better than Elemental Devastation, but again, a little bit of rage issues at the end there. I notice I have zero energy problems. I'm just going to show my rage bar and not my energy bar. I could take something like Unbridled Wrath, I think. My Deep Wounds is actually less of a percentage of my DPS than I thought it would be. I only have two points in it, though, and that's probably why... I'm thinking about maybe taking those two points out and putting them into Unbridled Wrath. I think that might smooth everything out. If you don't know what Unbridled Wrath does, every time I cleave with anything or do an auto attack, which as a dual wielder with attack speed and sword spec is even better, I get, uh, it looks like four additional rage points with two points in it. I think that's what I want. Let's go ahead and try it. So I vendored everything I've collected from like those dailies earlier and stuff like that, and it ended up being plus 60 gold roughly, which is pretty good. I also just got into a plus five, which I think is a nice benchmark for this. I don't think I'm actually perfect for it single target wise but i think my cleave is going to be an asset and it's actually going to be an upper black rock spire so that's pretty interesting to think about okay so we're in and so far we're actually at the top of the damage meters for most of these pulls this is the first one where it's been contentious at all but as it gets bigger i'm going to start dwarfing everybody at least from my experience so far so this is an exciting one right because typically you need a bunch of people to do this but for you know mythic plus it is a five man dungeon i'm hoping we get some good stuff i want to hopefully two chest this as well I don't know how good the party is yet. I also think I undergear this a bit, so... If I'm at the top, that's definitely not the best first sign. But it looks like we've got somebody who's pretty good in here doing big DPS. So let's just cover the highlights and see if we can get anything good at the end. So this is genuinely a high point in the build, right? 10k DPS right before the Ember Seer boss. Don't mind if I do. All right, let's check out the single target. That's so weird. It's still so horrible. It looks like it's only 2k. That was a little scuffed because recount is also bad. So I think I'm going to go back to details or something like that because it's not resetting between pulls properly. So I had to reset it myself. So I could have been slightly higher, but then again, everybody could have been on that pull. And yeah, that's just so scuffed. I have no idea why. Okay, another mega big pull. Oh, we died. Really? <laughs> I was doing too much and they all hit me. I haven't been in that position as a DPS in a long time where you just do so much DPS that you somehow still take aggro with the tank changes and die. I'll take it though, it's kind of a compliment. I don't think this is gonna be a two chest the more I look at it though. I think none of us have enough DPS and that's all it is. Oh my God, it's so good. The AOE is so just satisfying watching all the numbers appear. Okay, still first place DPS. I think we're pulling things we don't have to pull at this point. Unfortunately, nobody knows the route I think for upper Black Rock Spire in my party including me like i rarely ever do this as a mythic plus dungeon i have no idea okay we're gonna try we're gonna try a little maneuver here they actually locked the gates so you can't skip the ring supposedly there is a boon here which makes me think it was meant to be jumped <laughs> can you click it and jump oh it's so scary oh it's so fucking scary it's so fucking scary oh fuck okay okay oh oh i made it but I didn't click on the Oh, no, God, please, guys, please. He made it too. We're here. It's working. Oh, my God. We skipped everything. It was so meant to be. Hey, wait. Where? Are oh, yeah. This leads to the last boss. Like, literally. Holy crap. What a jump. Oh, God. Okay, we wiped. It didn't work. It should have worked. But for some reason, three of our allies just lagged behind. They didn't jump. And I can't really understand why. I'm so confused, man. I was the first one to make the jump. Slag followed me. He knows what to do. He, I, I can already tell we're on the same wavelength, you know? He's even transformed, dude. Like, we're, we're the same person in many ways. But the rest of the group didn't come. So now we're totally one-chesting this. Okay, yeah, I'm talking about cutting it close, guys. Uh, a minute and a half. I think we should be able to end him here, though. 5k DPS roughly this entire time. I'll take that. There we go. Okay, so... Do we get something good? Because that's the only reason I'm here. Let's open the crappy ones up first. We can get rid of this. That's a key that we can't use. Okay, crappy one up first. Strength. Mud-stained boots. That truly is garbage. Wow. That is literally the boots I already have, but missing a stat. Wow. Okay. Uh, buff that, please. Okay, next one. The one that matters. La piece de resistance mythic five. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, God. Wow. Guys, wow. It's literally a one H. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know what to say. It's so not good. Okay, uh, well, it's item level 66. We can keep it if we ever use a 1H, I guess. It's weird stats, but uh, 
Okay, wow, anticlimactic, right? But okay, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video right there. It's already gotten kind of long. We've done a lot of progression on this character, trying to convert him into getting a strength set, which opens up a bunch of new builds, and getting into some Mythic Plus for the first time on this guy, not my dwarf guy. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. More videos to come. I'll see you in the next one. McDoubles out.